Everybody, welcome to another episode of uh, Rethink Podcast, where we're just kind of looking at different parts of life and going, maybe I need to rethink how I look at that and then how I apply that, uh, just based on some things that are uh, coming clear clear to me. So today, uh, I'm really, really excited. Uh, some of you know Matt, and some of you don't know Matt. You're infamous. Mm-hmm. That's the way I like to say it, more than famous. Yeah. The Amigos <laughs> movie. For sure. Come on. Anyway, <laughs> but um, it's really interesting. So I'm going to tell you how I met Matt. Matt. <laughs> Um, I get this random email or no Instagram DM DM straight up DM. Yeah. And there's this, there's this dude and, <laughs> and it's like, he's a big buff dude. I mean, you're okay. Yeah. yeah little you're, bit. My rib hurts uh, <laughs> because he played uh, volleyball. What was it? Oh, come on. Come on. Flag Listen football. Flag football. Flag football. His, his, Matt's wife's right over Amy's right over here. So I got to be nice because whenever I talk about a, a a woman who could bench press her husband, it's it's Matt's wife. Anyway, so <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, I get this DM from this guy who just feels like absolutely convicted. He's like, hey, I really love what you're doing. I want uh, we have the men's summit coming up, and then he starts talking about his personal life and you it got tears, and I'm like, normally I would just put this in the category of it's another weird person. <laughs> Right, but but I didn't feel that with you. Yeah, it's like it's like, why do I feel like I need to respond to this guy? So if I haven't responded to you, it's because you're in the category you're, you're a weird person. <laughs> so I'm just calling it out. Um, but I I I remember going, hey, I, yes, let's get together. Yeah, and then we got together at a little restaurant over in Erie. Yep. And by the time that lunch is over, it's like not only do I kind of want to get to know you more, would you like to maybe speak? <laughs> At the Rocky Mountain Men's Summit, which you did, and uh, what can I ask you? What prompted you? And maybe you do this to all the guys. I don't know. What caused you to go like, I'm going to shoot a message? And I know the answer because you were coached mm-hmm. by by the <laughs> wife. All right, right. We should all listen to our wives more, just so the record, right? What 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 caused you to go like, I'm I am going to do it. I'm going to shoot this three minute video in DM Jim. You know, it was. Um I'll tell you the exact scenario that happened that morning. Uh, my wife and I, at the beginning of this year, said one of our goals was to read the Bible together. And so we get up, we make coffee, we read for an hour, we go to the gym, and then come back and read for an hour. Um, oh, woke you up, work out? A little bit. I wasn't sure. A little bit. Um, yeah. I'm a, I'm a vegan, if you can't tell. <laughs> uh, I only eat grass-fed. Uh, thanks fed. for joining us. I, I only eat grass-fed beef. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so good. Vegan animals. So good. Um yeah, so we, we were sitting there chatting, and, and instantly she's like, are you good? Did you sleep good last night? I'm like, I've been having this crazy recurring dream, you know, and, and it has to do with us starting a family and, and yada, yada. It's been seven nights in a row. And so long story short, we have that conversation. Um, we open up Instagram, which we know do every morning to make our morning post motivation, post something, right? And the first thing that I saw was you sitting, I think, in the you know, um, a rocking chair up at your cabin, right? And you're talking about the men's summit. I'm like, oh, wow. I had no idea they were doing another men's summit. The last one I went to was like five years ago, you know? And so we're uh, we're sitting there, and I listen to your message, and I'm, I'm looking at Amy, and we're talking, going, she's like, you're in the process of, like, rebranding a lot of your material specific for men, right? And I was like, yeah. She's like, I think you should send a video. And I'm like, tell them what? She's like, I don't know. See how you can get involved. And I'm like, all right. Yeah, you're right. And so she literally opened the back door. It's like, just shoot outside. So I walked outside, set up the camera. That was one take. I just sat down, made a video, and just spoke from my heart because of, I saw what your message was. I knew what we're sitting on. And I just have a, I have a heart for wanting to help men do life better. And, and not just do life better, but in all aspects of their life, from mind, body, spirit, my whole background of 18 years it's human performance, transformation of, of weight loss and body transformation. And that was what it was. I, I went outside, made a quick little video. Um, I think I sent it via email first to the wrong email. And I'm like, <laughs> I waited till the next morning. I'm like, I didn't hear anything back. But I could tell by the post you were making, I believe you were in your anniversary trip in like Costa Rica. And so I'm like, well, I, I want to read a lot of emails. I was like, I don't want to bug this guy. Busy. But I'm but I'm also like... Dude, I know this, the, the men's summit's like three weeks away. I'm going to bug this guy. And so I sent a message via, I think I sent a 60-second audio message to follow up the video. Said, hey, I sent you an email with a video. You know, let me know what you think. And all I got back was like, resend it to this email address. So I'm like, oh, okay. So then I resent it to that email, and it was 48 hours later. I, one of you guys reached out and was like, hey, let's grab lunch. You know, and so I was like, all right, that's, that's it, sweet. 
you know? So I was like, that, awesome. It was actually me. That was okay. So it was you. I wasn't, I wasn't sure if you had a ghost writer or something, you know? Um, it was me, <laughs> wasn't it? Was it you? <laughs> <laughs> it was Micah. Never mind. <laughs> no, but that was, uh, you know, I just wanted to, I, I wanted to link up and I've never sent a video to any other person before. I coach my clients on doing that when they're trying to get leads and stuff like that, but I've never actually sent a video, you know, to, uh, Oh, there's so many things I've preached that I haven't done. Right. Too, so. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Hey, so let's go. So, so we talked, and then yeah. you ended up doing a whole thing about the connection between mind and body. Yeah. Uh, up at uh, the summit. Yeah. And so one of the things I'm trying to do with this herd thing is there are four aspects of a human's life, but I really want to lean into a man's life, and yeah. that is that your heart, which is your leadership, mm -hmm. your soul, which is your emotions and your relationships, your mind, which is how you think about reality and truth, and your body, you cannot separate them. They are. And you've made a 20-year career out of preaching this sermon, right? Right? Yeah. Uh, the, the connection of that. And so um, that that's what I was like, dude, you're already, you're already drinking the Kool-Aid. You're already preaching the sermon. You're already you know, sending the message out. You're, you're doing it from a, um, a human performance, but you really, what I thought was like, you just want people to perf perform is not the right word better in life. Yeah. Like yeah. God, God has designed us to perform, to execute mm. in, in that, um, it's a Rourke, he calls it your harmonic gate. Yeah. Isn't that good? I love it. Uh, the thing I like, uh, uh, like a like a racehorse. When yep. you watch a racehorse run, it's like maybe you're created that. I was I was bear hunting a couple weeks ago, and I saw these dogs. They just look like hound dogs, and I asked the owner like 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 what's that cost? He goes six to ten thousand dollars a dog, <laughs> and I'm like for that much. Like, but then when they smelled a bear, mm -hmm. poof, they exploded, Crazy. and then six. Six dogs went boom, and and we tracked them as best we could. They were doing what they were born to do, mm. and that's what that's what you're trying to do. Yeah, you're trying to help people. I'm gonna hone it in, mm -hmm. you know, because it's like you're you're getting even more. I'm really going after the hearts of men to do what they were born to do. Yeah, is that is that accurate? Absolutely, absolutely. So, tell me your story. Okay, what what got? <laughs> I mean, even in this twenty years, yeah. right? What what made you say I think I want to bend my life in this direction? What's your story that ends up on this couch today? Yeah, so I mean, this starts back when I was a kid, right? <laughs> and um, this goes back to what we had a lot of conversation about, and we'll I know we'll talk about it more. But you know, I I I'm just gonna jump right into it. You know, I was molested and raped growing up for a lot of my childhood, and at 12 years old, I was extremely angry and constantly starting to get into it with my dad. You know, I'm kind of getting bigger and bigger, but I, I'm not really doing weightlifting. I'm just doing calisthenics. I'm, I'm going to stop right there. Yeah. Okay? Just for a listener, right? Yeah. One in four of us were. Mm, yeah. Nobody talks about it. Nope. You know, one in three women are. Yeah. Right. And the whole me too thing and stuff like that is like, I, I absolutely, we got to protect women. So like, yeah. nobody's talking about yeah. these, these boys out there mm -hmm. that, right. Because it's like, I don't have a better language for this. If if an older guy or something like that, you know, acts out on a girl, at least it's heterosexual, mm -hmm. right? But when some dude takes advantage of me, mm -hmm. that's a whole, I don't want to say a different baggage for a boy to carry, mm -hmm. right? It very much is. And, and I, I'm not negating no. anything about what, how women have been hurt, right? Yeah. But it's like, just I just wanted to say, if, if you're out there and like going, hey, that happened, what you're talking about happened to me as a kid. Yeah. You're not in a small minority. Mm -mm. There's a lot of us, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And we don't know what to do with it or where to take it. Okay? Yeah. And that's where you're going with this. Absolutely. Because, okay, so that happened. Yep. And now you start growing up with this 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 happened go yeah and so basically I'm, a, I'm 13 years old and we're finally at this crossroads with my parents where my my anger is really just getting out of control um and i'm just starting to argue and fight and it's just getting bigger and bigger as the days go on can i ask and, you a question yeah could you could you say i'm angry because or are you just angry at that point I was just angry. Yeah. I knew deep down what I was angry about, but I I had told nobody and I've not worked through yeah, it. I mean, I didn't know. With it, right? Absolutely. You just push it, right? And I think yes. that's what we do as men with our emotions uh, when we're 
not skilled and we don't have the right resources and tools, that's right? Yeah. And so that's really where this all ends up going to, right? So I'm 13 years old. I finally tell my parents, I'm like, look, don't send me to military school or boot camp. Like, can you just get me a gym membership? And my dad, so we go over, get a gym membership. And my dad basically tells me one thing. When you're upset, don't come home until you're not upset. And so I'll never forget this. It's like the gym closes at 9, 9.30. I, I, I'm still training, and it's me and the janitor cleaning the gym, right? And I hear knocking on the door, and all of a sudden I see my dad walking through the gym, and I'm thinking, my dad shouldn't be here. The gym closed half an hour ago. My dad's like, what are you doing? I'm like, he said, don't come home until I wasn't mad. Yeah. you know. And I was like, I'm still mad. He's like, you've been here three hours. And I'm like, I'm still mad. you know. And so I just didn't know how to do it. But that's where all of this started. You know, and so a year later, I've put on, I think I put on 40 pounds as a 13 year old um, because I'm just training three hours a day. I was a homeschooler. So I'd finish my school at two o'clock. I'd go straight to the gym and train three, four, five, six hours sometimes um, and just got massive. And so right, right about 13 and about seven months into that, my dad throws me a fitness magazine. I was like, dude, you should think about doing a bodybuilding show. I'm like, I don't know what this is. You know, so a week after I turned 14 years old, I compete for Mr. High School Colorado and I won and I was hooked. And I had never got so in depth with training to that capacity, right? And I'm just doing this on my own as a 14 year old. You're not, um, you're not getting coaching. You're not getting diet. I'm not, not getting good. coaching. No, my wife <clears throat> just put together a, a before and after. This is me at 14 years old on the right hand well, side. Get this one. Um, that's me at 14 years old. You know, and so um, looks just like me, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, can, can you zoom in on this? Can you zoom on this? <laughs> it's, it's just, um, this is, yeah. So that's wait. This is before and after. No, so the right picture is me at fourteen years old. Yeah, and the left picture is me six years ago at the Mister Colorado. You have you so. have less hair. Yeah, a little bit, huh? I went from I uh, went from a little small with hair to completely bald and more muscle. I transferred it. I, I traded it in. Ain't nothing wrong with that, brother. Ain't nothing wrong with that. So that became that became my coping mechanism for a long time, and I, I ended up competing for eighteen years. But it was um, it was it was a, a girlfriend before my wife um, that finally was literally breaking up with me because of my anger issues, and and finally that's when I broke down one day, and I had I had had a lot to drink. And I'd never told anybody. And so I told her, and I think that was the only... Told who? Uh, this ex-girlfriend. And the only reason I believe that she that we were brought into our life, because we were polar opposites on everything, um, was to help me through that situation and give me some guidance. And all she did was say, look, I don't, I don't want to keep dating, but here's some books to help you through this pain and, and dealing with this trauma and whatever. And so uh, shortly after that, four months later, I ended up meeting my now wife in school. And so right off the bat, um, I immediately told her what was going on um, and all of this... You know, this is what's going on. Like, this is what I'm dealing with. And the grace that was given to me to kind of work through that, I was like, wow, this girl's different, you know, because I was still really, really angry and it was still very new emotions for me. Um, But that's really how the, I got into the fitness industry was I wanted to lift weights first to get my anger out Two, the abuse was still happening, right? At 13 years old. And so for me, when you start going to the gym, when I started going to the gym, I'm still being abused by this group of men. It's a group, not an individual. And so, um, whew. yeah, you get it. I have no problem talking about it, but you don't ever forget the, you don't ever forget the emotion and the feeling that went into that. And um, again, going back to like, as men, when it's, when it's men abusing sexually men, there's just a different, I'm not, I shouldn't say different. For men, there's a different emotion that's involved with in that because it, it, it's it, a unique. Yeah, unique. Um, a unique emotion that's attached to that. And so for me, going to the gym was my ability to get strong so that when the abuse happened, I could I actually felt I, like I was strong enough to fight. And so it, it had been probably about eight months into weight training when I finally was like, this is the day. If this, if this, if this happens... The next time it happens, I feel good enough now. You know, I put on 20 pounds, 25 pounds. I felt strong. You know, I'm like, I'm going to fight my way out of this. It's not happening anymore. And so, uh, lo and behold, the situation happens again. And I, I step up, I stand up, and I'm like, it's not happening anymore. You're never touching me again. And they go, okay. That's simple. You think that I would be happy I know where you're about going, that. My anger... 10 x 
because I was so upset with myself. Yeah. Because now I'm playing the guilt game going, I could have stopped this earlier by just saying no. I thought there was a physical component to me needing to be strong enough to stay stand up for myself. Mm. And so the spiral then gets real bad, right? I'm still training, I'm still bodybuilding, but now I've got all this internal guilt that starts to turn into heavy usage of substances, you know? And I used to write poems all the time and I have a poem that talks about, you know, I remember waking up with bottles in my bed and needles in my sink, you know, Um, because... I just wanted, I felt so numb because I had just suppressed so many of my emotions that I was trying to just do something to fill an emotion. Can I, can I throw a language out the, where I landed? Yeah. What kind of guy doesn't fight back? Yeah. Like wuss. I mean, I've got or, other words for that. Or, or maybe, maybe, maybe this is my place. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And that's, so that's the spiral as I go into my teenage years, right? I start to fight with a lot of big identity issues Um, as a man, as a heterosexual man, you know, um, it's, uh, that's the spiral that I then start to battle. It's not a, um, I've only told at this point, probably like three people, right? At this point in time. And so it's like, it started, it's slowly talking about it more. And like, every time I talk about it a little bit more, I feel like a little bit dies off a little bit more of it dies off, but the, the memory never goes away. The, yep. the, the, the thoughts, the images, all of that's always still there. Yep. I just need to learn how to become stronger now, not just physically. And so that starts to lead me into step two, right? I ma- I feel like I ma- master the physical strength part of things sure. but now i'm just a total freaking nut job like i'm literally a, a basket <laughs> case dude um and so that's where i start to get heavy into like studying leadership development and all of this other stuff because i'm like it's my mind now my mind's driving me crazy and i i, I want to bash my head against the wall and frankly i don't want to live i don't and i go down a very i go down a who it's good I go down a very deep route and path with that. And um, at the peak of it, I am, I'm married. I'm married to my, my wife. And I remember vividly like just not being able to handle where we were. And this is about six years ago. And I remember her leaving for work, me giving an extra big hug and just saying, I love you. You said goodbye, didn't you? Mm-hmm. And I just, I walked back to my room, opened up my safe, put one bullet in my revolver, and that's all I remember. Mm. That's all I remember. Wow. I don't remember what happened after that, but I do remember when I woke up on the floor in front of my safe. Safe is open, pistol is on the ground, and my wife is spooning me. She's laying right behind me. She didn't say anything. She just caressed my arm and just said, please don't ever leave me. Mm. And that's, that's when I know I'm like, I, I can't, I can't do this. I can't fight this battle. I can't hold this weight anymore by myself. I need, I need some help. Like I, I, I don't know how to, I don't know how to move forward with this pain that I'm carrying this weight that I'm carrying. I I don't feel like I can talk to anybody, you know? Um, And so it was like, it was at that moment that I hired a therapist. Okay. Um, Let me take a time out. So how old were you at that point? This is 32, 31, 32. Okay. So we're looking at 20, almost 20 years. Mm -hmm. The reason I'm asking this is like, because here's what a lot of us are thinking: like that was 20 years ago, <laughs> right? Yeah. That was that was that was decades ago. That I'm I'm over that. Yeah. And the truth is, we're not. We're not. Like I didn't really start doing my work around my the shit that happened to me until I was 51. Wow. Okay. Wow. I, I went to Crucible and I connected the dots, and I mean, oh, you know, it's like. I, I just think that there's a lot of us around here going mm-hmm. like, well, if I was strong, that shouldn't matter or I'd get over it, whatever that is. And mm-hmm. it's like, 
It's like it doesn't go away. No. And it comes out in ways in, in dots that you don't connect. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. It's like I, I was I was meeting with uh, my counselor came and uh, talked to our staff this past week. He says, for all your strengths, <laughs> there's a shadow. Mm -hmm. And for every shadow, there's a strength. So like I'm I'm a I'm a I'm a I think I'm a really fantastic leader. Mm -hmm. The shadow of that is don't fail, don't <laughs> fail, don't fail, yeah. don't fail. Right? Because yep. if you fail, you're weak. Yep. And if you get weak, you'll get screwed in a barn again. Yep. Right? Yeah. So that's like, and there's a balance of that. Well, and mine was a mask, right? Mm -hmm. So in my teenage years, before I'm telling anybody, I know my pain, right? Sure. So mine was gym. And once I got muscle, it was fighting. I would, I remember, I, I would go to bars by myself just to fight. Because I knew that's where I could find guys that wanted to fight. Mm -hmm. And I just started fighting, you know, and I, and I enjoyed it. Because again, when you when I got hit, I felt something. That's good. That's I felt good, something. You know I mean? Yeah, you know. And so it was like I love I loved it. And it was it was like it was literally like a drug. Like some people get hit and they're like, oh my god, I never want to feel that again. That, that hurt. <laughs> yeah. I got hit and it was like it was like an a, a endorphins going through my body that I mm. couldn't even a rush. I couldn't even tell. I'm like, hit me again. Punch me in the face again. You know. And I was like, you. Sometimes you'll see me doing this with my eye. There's like a, a bone spur in here from getting hit in the face. Um, you know, and it was just like, those are some of those things that I, that I just deal with now, right? Consequences of not learning maybe a better way to cope and, and, and work through problems. And so finally, you know, I'm, I'm married about five or six years now. And I realize that I'm, I'm doing the, the outbursts that I, that I don't want to do. You know, when, when, when my triggers happen, I'm punching holes in walls, I'm throwing shit, I'm breaking stuff. And I'm like, it's this one day that it finally just clicks going, dude, you don't have it together, man. You got the physical side of it. You've mastered that. But you haven't done anything to try and develop and control your mind, you know, and fix going, look, the, the memories are never going to go away, but I can learn better coping ways and better coping mechanisms that I just don't have resources to right now. That's where professional counselors come into place. They equip us with resources and tools that we just don't know how to deal with those traumatic and trauma-ridden memories mm. and things that have happened to us. Yeah, so you feel weak, so you think yeah. if I get strong, yeah. that'll fix it. But yeah. there's all other aspects. Yeah. Right? So now it's like, nobody's, nobody can do that to me again because I could beat the crap out of them, yep. all right? But I still haven't, I still haven't, like, filled this, like, mm. wound or this whatever. It's like, I know, I know nobody can do that to me again, but I still don't know what to do with the pain or, or all that. Yeah. So you're laying, Amy's... Laying with you there yeah. on the floor, right? And you said, "I, I'm gonna, I want to come back to where was God and all this, mm -hmm. okay?" But like, so I, that's when you started talking to a counselor. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So let's pick up. Go over there. So let me to bring to kind of bring in this God piece of it. I grew up a Christian my whole life, right? Never once talked to my 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 pastors or anything about the pain that was going on. I was going to youth group when this stuff was happening, yeah. right? And it was just some a mask because there's so much shame that we carry, men and women. I feel like because of societal reasons, men carry an immense amount of that shame because we, we will just not talk to anybody, right? It, it's this internal thing that we suppress that becomes that internal bomb. And so after high school, I'm just like, dude, I don't want anything to do with the church. God, none of my even friends know what's going on. And, you know, it's the ignorance of like, well, you've never told them, you know, and you've, you're playing a pretty good, everybody thinks you're happy. You know, and I was the happy go lucky guy. Like I was the goofball, you know, with muscle, you know, and made everybody happy and smile at youth group. And so nobody had an idea what was going on. Nobody. And so I left the church because I was just like, I don't want anything. Like if this, if there was real God, he wouldn't have let this happen to me, mm. you know? And so I start to wrestle with the thoughts of like, am I gay? Like why, why did I, why did I get aroused when this was happening and this abuse was happening? You know, because, well, the wind blows when you're a teenager and things happen, yeah, you know? So, right. You know, so I start to play with these identity issues. And so during that time, uh, that's when I, I met my, my wife, right? We, were, we met in college uh, on a weight bench in a weight room, you know? And so we're probably a year and a half into dating and I, I'm still, I'm in this, this time period, what I call my sabbatical from the church, you know, of six, five or six year period where I just want, don't want anything to do with it. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to drink my pain away. I'm going to work out my pain away and it's just, nothing's helping. Right. And so. Um, it is probably a year and a half into dating my wife, man, maybe not even that much, maybe six months, 
six months into dating my wife where I finally tell her like, look, this is what's happened to me. And I kind of just decide, you know what? I just got to tell her everything because I really love this woman. I want to spend the rest of my life with her, but I also don't want to hide anything from her. And then I'm also like, you know what? She's going to take off. So let me just, let me just let's get it, it over with. Let's just get it over with. And I, li- I mean, I told her everything. And dude, all she did was hug me. Yeah. Said, let's do this. Let's do this together. There was no, there was no shame. There was no guilt. It was just like, I am so sorry this happened to you. And I was like, what? What's the, what's the, <laughs> what's the response you made up in your mind that would probably happen? You oh, I was this? for like I. I mean, I blurted so much out because I knew that as soon as I told her this, she's like, "I don't want to deal with this nut job." You are like, up. you are a mess. <laughs> like honestly, and so I, I, I went into it knowing, like, I, I knew, which I was obviously wrong. Yeah, like she's gonna be like, "I don't need this." Like she had just moved to Colorado. She's like, "Oh my god, this guy's a nutbag," you know. Like you've got way too much drama for me to want to deal with, but I was wrong. You know, and so it's probably go fast forward another six months, right? Um, I've already told her this, but we're we're still partying and drinking and doing all the things that we're doing, right? Because I had left the church. I'm just I don't want anything to do with it. We're laying in bed. I'm pretty certain I was still drunk and very high um, from a night of partying. And she rolls over and goes, "Do you want to go to church?" That is the last thing, the last thing I ever wanted to hear in that current moment. And like everything inside of me was like, oh no, who got to her? <laughs> like who got to her? Somebody told her something. She ran into an old friend and was like, you need to get Matt back in the church, you know, or something. And, and that was the moment. And so I'm like, I mean, we've never really talked about this, you know, like we've never gone to church together. I've never talked about it. I mean, I told her I grew up in the church, but I, I don't go to the church. And we met during my whole like, hey, I'm just going to go out and figure out all these feelings that I have and why they're not right, you know, um, which is like I spoke at the men's summit, which became a massive uh, obsession with pornography, you know, and, and womanizing in anything to free my mind and tell me that what happened was not, was not me. I'll prove you. I'm not that. Exactly. Yeah. Right. And so that, that, that becomes a big spiral. And I tell my wife that too, like, Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm obsessed with pornography. Like I, I, then this is, this is what I attribute the reason why to right like i this is ha- what happened and now i'm like to prove that i didn't really have those feelings and i and i'm and i'm not gay and all of these different things right i'm like i'm going the other side so extreme just to try to prove myself but it's just an empty it's an empty bottle right there's just nothing ever at the bottom of it so she, she rolls over and says do you want to go to church and i'm like uh, i don't know if that's a question or a statement like the way that she said yes. and i'm like yeah uh uh-huh, yeah no i don't you know, so like, yeah, so we get up and go and I'm, I mean, we show up and I'm, dude, I'm ripped still, like very lit still. Um, and, um, bro, it was, I, I don't, I can't even fully remember. I mean, this was thir- 11, 12, 12 and a half years ago, you know? And, and you so, sat in church and went, I'm Mr. Colorado, but that pastor is more ripped than me. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Okay. I basically. I, I was very, it. very jealous. Um, <laughs> You know, uh, but it was that. It was heard that, a little yip. It's Amy laughing yeah, I mean, at me. It's okay. <laughs> um, so we, we we listen and we're driving home and I'm I'm not saying anything. She's like, "Are you okay?" And I'm like, "I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Like, I I don't even know at this point." But she's like, "Well, what are you thinking?" I'm like, "I think we should probably start doing this." She's like, "What?" I'm like, "I think we should probably start doing this." Like, let's start coming on Sundays. And I'm like, dude, this is, like, again, like almost a five and a half, six year stint of me completely away from the church. Um, and I think it was just the fact, I mean, everybody says this about you. You're just real, right? You're, you're, you're a real pastor. For better or worse. Yeah, for better or for worse. <laughs> Look, some people might not like that. That's fine. Mm-hmm. You know, but that's what that's what I wanted, right? Was a real was a real pastor as a leader that would talk about their their struggles and their hurdles and their things. And so I, I don't even remember what it was, but it was enough of a sermon that got me going, yeah, we need to go back. And so we've been coming ever since, really, you know? And so that progresses. I'm, I'm like, where are we at in the story? So still working through stuff. I mean, I'm still working through stuff today. It, it's, it's a lifelong journey, Thank right? You. Growth doesn't happen in a day. It happens daily is what we like to say. And so... Um, for me, it's, 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 it's a progression of like, I've got to be intentional every day. Like there's still triggers in my life. There's still things that can instantly throw me Absolutely. off, but we talk about it as a husband and wife. She knows what my triggers are and she is extremely, extremely well. And she, she protects me. And 
two weeks ago, you said a sermon where we were talking specifically to women, bro. We were, we were in tears. We were in tears because there was a, you explained that a wife needs to submit to their husband and you explained that what submit means. So like, if you, if you need to go back and reference that sermon, reference the sermon, but we've been talking about it ever since. And I said that that's what changed my life was knowing that I had a strong, powerful woman behind me going, my job is to help make you the best husband and leader that you can be. Yeah, submit doesn't mean she works for you. No. She puts herself in a position to help you get yes. to where God wants you to be. Yeah. And sometimes that is like from a, we don't do well when people are pulling us up. Yeah. We do really, really well when somebody's like supporting us. And it's so it's a posture. Yeah. Not a, a, not in a ranking. For sure. Right? Yeah. It's like nobody wants to say, yeah, I work for my husband. No. But just for the first time in my life, feeling like I had that powerful love in my life that yeah. was like, I'm not going anywhere. Yeah. Like yeah. I'm, I'm here for you. I'm on your team. And if anybody screws with you, they're going to mess with me. And that's not going to be a pretty day. My, if you haven't met my wife, she's, she's a beefcake, pretty beefcake. Um, but I call I her beefcake all the time. So in introductory marks, right? <laughs> she could bench press you. Yeah. I joke about it all the time and it's not a joke. Like we don't change the weight when we're training. <laughs> if anything, I might take some of my, her weight off. It's just, it's ridiculous, you know? So, but it's, it's also been fun. We've been, well, you did hurt your riff in kickball. Yeah. Well, you know, I was, was doing it ballet. Was it, like, I think was it was pickleball. What was it? Yeah. Was? Ballet or something like that. Ballet. Like, yeah. Ballet. Um, lyrical no roller skating. To those men who really love ballet. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. So that, that begins like our, the progression, man, of, of really the, the I want to call it the restart. You know, um, of of me going, I need to do some work on myself, and I think I want to start here. And then from the church, it led to me getting some counseling. Not getting some counseling. I still have coaches that I wear. I call my counselors coaches. That's how I see my... It's a cooler word. Yeah, you know, I just like it. They're coaches. I go to them for help. They try to pull the best out of me. That's what coaching is, right? Teaching is putting new concepts into a person. Coaching is pulling out the inner potential that they don't even realize they have because the self-doubt is holding them back. And we'll get into that in a little bit. Did um, you know that the word therapy is based on the Greek word therapos, which means healing? No, I did not. You'll use that but now. I really now I definitely will go back to therapy. Um, therapy <laughs> means healing. Yeah, all and right. Healing means just getting back to the way it was supposed to be. Yeah, right. And, and there was a lot of that that needed to take place. Yeah, and 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 again, it was the mental side of it. That was the hardest hurdle for me to get over was being okay with the fact that I'm never going to forget this this trauma. But now it's up to me to develop the skills and resources to become stronger. They're not going away. So I either become... Your story's your story. That's it. So, you know, <clears throat> and, and people hear me say all the time, like, now I'm at the point where I want to use my mess into a message. And the more that I share and the more that I talk about it, the more men that are opening up. You know, even even we're doing some college ministry stuff here, volunteering with the church. The amount of boys that have men, young men that have come to me and just opened up about their hurt and pain and go, I don't I don't have anybody to share with. And I'm like, but I heard your story from so and so and so and so. And I'm like, man, you're not even in my little small group. Like, this is amazing, you know, but it also I, I say amazing. It's amazing from the point that I feel like we're getting some breakthrough with these young men that have never told anybody that this this because you never told anybody no because you thought this is un un unre irredeemable yeah right right hide this whatever that is and that is your strongest point of connection because there's so many of us out there that are hurting so I'm gonna go back so yeah. I don't want to redeem it too soon yeah you so you you start leaning into God mm -hmm. with your girlfriend Amy mm -hmm. all right so I always said this thing about. And I got it from uh, Crawford Loritz's son. Who was, uh, I just did an interview with him. So the stages of of a person are childhood, which means everybody takes care of me. Yep. Adolescent is I love all. I want all the privileges and none of the responsibility. <laughs> and adulthood is responsible. Okay. Yeah. So right now you have a girlfriend that you're treating like a wife, but you haven't taken responsibility for it. Correct. So, what point did you say I'm not? going to use my girlfriend anymore and I'm going to commit to her as a wife. And I use yeah. that language very intentionally because this yeah. is what we do. Yeah. Yep. It's right. It's like yep. out of our own fear about taking responsibility. Oh, hundred percent. We just, we push it. We, we push it and, but we still want, Oh yeah. We still want the, we still want to roll over in bed and go like, hey, I've all the privileges, right? <laughs> yeah. right? So, but something changed, and I was assuming both of you, yeah. but this isn't your podcast. <laughs> if you want to be on one, I can absolutely, okay? <laughs> Tell me 
tell me that journey because I have a lot of guys out there. One of my one of my dearest friends at the gym, and I'm going to do his wedding in a year. Yeah, and I'm like, buddy, it's like because we talk about this. It's like, yeah. so when you say you know, like for a while, it's like, hey, I yeah, we're not now. We are now. We are. We are. Yep. And I'm like, and I'm not his Holy Spirit, something like that, but. How did you work through that? Because it's as a man who's not really secure yet about his identity. Oh yeah, the idea of being married to, a, a, especially a strong woman. And I'm not talking about physical, yeah. right? Like, what changed in in that? I think there was a a level for me to just. I I, I honestly, it comes down to not really understanding why she would love me still, mm. and that was enough for me to go. This is, I mean, I kind of knew from the day that I met her that she was going to be the one. She just has eyes. Like, I mean, even my, the first time my sister, my older sister meets her, she calls my mom immediately and says, I just met Matt's future wife. (laughs) No joke. My mom calls me the next day and says, who's this girl, Amy? I'm like, I haven't even told you about this girl named Amy. And she goes, yeah, well, your sister met her last night and she seems to think you're going to marry her. A couple weeks later, Amy meets my parents at my house, at my parents' house for lunch. My mom takes a picture of us. She walks away, and I'm like, I look like I saw a deer in the headlights. Amy looks at me like, why, what is so weird? I'm, why are you so weird right now? I'm like, my mom has never taken a picture of me and a girlfriend. Ever. She knows some, like, she, she already knows now. My mom calls me the following day and says, you're going to marry her. And I'm like, oh, yeah, how do you know? She goes, I could tell by the way she looks at my son. No joke, man. And, and it's at that point where I'm like, yeah, I... I Yes, we're gonna probably, get married, and I'm, again, I'm not going to church at this time still, right? I mean, we 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 went once. We're still living what we would consider a life of sin, you know, for 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 most young Christians, and so. Well, you mean what God would consider? What God would consider a life of sin, exactly. You know, don't put that, um, don't put that on me. Right? <laughs> yeah, don't put that on me. I mean, that's what you died for, right? So that I could keep sinning and then just keep asking for forgiveness every time I screw up. All right. Um, you know, and so that, honestly, that's my truth mindset is just like, you know what? Like God died on the cross. He says I could just ask for forgiveness. I know I'm living in sin according to how I was raised. Let's roll. I, let's keep doing it. Feels good. Nothing feels wrong. In fact, this feels the best it's ever felt, you know? And I've got this girl who who grew up going to a Catholic church, but we're, so we're about a year and a half into our dating. We come to a sermon and on the ride home, she asked me, I've grown up in a Christian, or, you know, a Catholic church or a Catholic school. But what does it actually mean when, when to be a Christian? And you had said something in the sermon, and I'm like, whoa, wait, what? And I was like, I thought, you, she's like, well, I mean, I grew up in a Catholic school, you know, but I don't actually know that I know what it means to be a Christian. And so we get in this conversation, and, dude, we pulled on a dirt road driving home, and that was a moment for me that will forever be the most precious moment outside of my marriage with my wife. Okay. And she goes, I want to, I want to, I want to say that prayer. I want to commit my life to Christ. And I'm like, right now on this dirt road next to me, like I'm, we're like living in a life of sin. Like this is crazy. You didn't say that. No, I didn't say that at all. (laughs) That's what I'm thinking. (laughs) That's a moment killer. Let me just say that. (laughs) No, man. So like we're in tears and we, we talk about what that means and like what it means to believe that Jesus Christ died for our sins. And we go through the whole thing. And I'm like, we, we, we sat there in my truck saying that prayer. And I was like, that might be honestly one of the most special moments for me. Definitely pivotal. A a pivotal moment for sure. One that I will forever cherish in my entire life, that that was how I got to be able to help her, you know, and go like, well, if you're going to say that prayer now, like I really like, I need to recommit my life because I'm still not really jiving about this whole thing, you know, about wanting to go back. I'm not sure if I want to go back into the, the church. I studied everything for those six years. I mean, when we were dating, I told her I had to go to my storage unit to get a book. No joke. I had a public storage unit, and it was my library lined. All the exterior walls with books is up from floor to ceiling. I was reading everything about any religion I could get my hands on. I was just, again, trying to find something that I could feel, and I wasn't feeling God. Hmm. But nothing else made sense after I spent six years studying stuff. You, know, you come to my house now, you can still see hundreds of books on everything from this, you know, the, 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 the science of God, Darwinism, uh, Mormonism, Catholicism, Islam. I mean, you got it. I got books on it, you know, and it was just like I wanted to see if there was something else that made more sense. And truthfully, nothing made sense to me. So I was like, well, the only thing that makes kind of sense is this thing I call Christianity. So I guess that's it. That's the best we got out there, you know. And so that was my attitude coming back to church was like, well, that's the best that I could find. 
fast forward a little bit. We finally, again, make this commitment. We're, I think I proposed probably two years, two years, two and a half years into us dating. Um, so about six months after that moment. About six months after that moment. Yeah. Um, and, um, and, and then that was what set the trajectory of to where we're at now. You know, um, it was, uh, I knew I didn't want to lose her and I knew that I wasn't quite ready to fully take that responsibility that you were talking about because I felt a mess still inside deep down Mm -hmm. from like a core emotional, you know, moment. Because as I said about earlier about the whole gun moment, that was, that, that was, that was, years into our marriage yeah, sure. four or five years into our marriage right so i'm still dealing with stuff that i don't know how to deal with you know at that moment um and so really it's that pivotal moment of going wow i've got this woman in my life like that is she's now my responsibility i need to step up as a as a as a young man in my late 20s at this point going dude it's time to take some responsibility and this is going to be really ugly and really hard but she's willing to fight with me mm-hmm. And I'm no longer battling by myself. There you go. You know, and I'm like, if this woman is willing to commit to me with all of my mess and my weight and my garbage that I'm carrying with me, I can commit to her. I'm going, I'm going to commit to becoming better, right? Better is not something we do. Better is something we become. There you go. And that was, that was really the pivotal moment for me that I was just like, I can't keep doing what I'm doing right now. Something's got to change. And so we talked and, um, you know, we, we, we still drink, but we have limits. There's never, we have a three drink max when we go out, you know, and it's like, I like wine. We like beer, but ultimately we need a quicker. Yeah. So I'm saying, (laughs) (laughs) you know, so that was, that was our thing. So it was setting up these boundaries and talking with each other about how do we continue to help each other grow in this direction. It's good. You know? Um, yeah. Yeah. So, um, let's talk about your life now. Yeah. All right. So, cause when I met you, you start talking about what, since those moments, mm-hmm. since you and Amy came together yep. and, and then, uh, when, when I, part of your story is battling fertility stuff and, mm-hmm. and, and that, and that drives some couples apart and it's made you guys just have this tenderness for like right now you're like working with next gen you're 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 helping uh our friend through some uh child issues mm-hmm. like bearing like fertility like all, all that you know it's like it's like you guys have this empathy and sympathy from from what happened to you what happened to you all yeah what you guys are working through together i mean you're working with our college students you're supposed to limit it to 12 guys and you had 22 guys. So you're breaking the rules. Yeah. I know right? Ben's going to, Ben's going to beat me up. Yeah. <laughs> Ben's tough, but together, right. <laughs> I think I can play the boss card and you just right. beat the crap out of him. Right. <laughs> um, you've dedicated your life towards, uh, connecting the parts. And, and probably this is from your story. Yeah. So many parts of your life are disconnected and, and you've, You've found a way, and you've dedicated the last at least decade, maybe more. I don't know. Um, You put yourself under like the tutelage of probably one of the biggest leadership gurus in the world, John Maxwell. Yeah. Right. You not just learned it; you're teaching it um, about this mind, body, soul, spirit. This thing that we're all going after. Yeah. That this 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 integration of all that. Yep. All right. And like like. You were a last minute add to the men's summit. Yeah. Right. So we gave you like a, what a seven thirty a.m. session yeah. at a men's retreat on a Saturday morning <laughs> when men are going like I don't have kids, I just want to sleep. Yeah. Right. Yep. And the room was full, and I yeah, came. It was a bit shocking. <laughs> it was. It, I was honestly, expecting fifty to hundred guys, maybe no, most, max. Most of the guys came. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Hundreds of guys came, and dude, you were in your element. Hmm. And you you had this much time, and uh, and 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 you just started teaching about connections of people's men's lives. Yeah, now I'm gonna say men's people's lives. But yeah, let's say men's right. Why do you do that? Hmm. And what do you think got between three and four hundred men out hmm. of bed on a Saturday morning 
before breakfast, before coffee, in a last minute ad to come to a session on mind body connection. Why do you think? Why do you think? What do you think they were looking for? Mm. And what? What question did they want answered? Because I think whatever the, both of those answers are is like what you said. I think I want to do this with my life. Mm-hmm. But, uh, so go. Yeah, it comes down to in my own rehabilitation, I realized it wasn't one dimensional, right? There were multiple components that make up a human being. And I was only working on one, the out, outward physical element. And I got that to peak peak level. I mean, I'm, I won Mr. High School Colorado. Seventh is Mr. Teen USA. Two-time Mr. Natural Colorado. The youngest person to ever do that. And so, like, I felt like I was at my peak. But during this time... Me too. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? I, I did all that. I, I, I've seen those pictures. No, you have not. No, I haven't. Shut up. Um, Go ahead. Go ahead. And... Uh, it, and, it, and you know what? You can take body out and go like yeah. financially. I made it. Yeah. Physically, you made it. Yep. Financially, I made a, a big, a big pot of money. Yeah. Or you know, I did. I I accomplished whatever goal. It's like, but it's one dimensional. Yeah. Go. And so uh, at this time, I'm I'm a serial startup entrepreneur, right? I was able to build an international fitness brand by 24 years old. Trained over 13,000 transformations in 22 countries. And we're doing this through email at the time. Right. But I mean, this is this is like right at the MySpace. I mean, people are like, what the heck's MySpace? I mean, like, like, I'm missing MySpace like, today at lunch. Right. <laughs> Weird. Go ahead. <laughs> and so it uh, it becomes this 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 real my new purpose. Right. I'm like, wow, I am really good at helping people who have struggled to lose weight or whatever, figure out the system of success for this. And a lot of them are going, oh, wait, I don't have to diet? I'm like, no, you don't have to diet. Diets are stupid. The first three words are die because that's what you feel like happening when you're dieting. I was like, ours is about lifestyle management, something that we can help you go, well, look, you're doing all the right things. Let's just reorder some of this stuff and maybe get rid of a little bit of this crap over here and, and then replace it with something else over here, right? And so to the men's summit component, what I think got so many men to show up was, so many of us, I think, are working one dimensionally on fixing our, our 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 issues. Okay. Right? Like we think we can go work out our problems, we can go work out our anger. And it's the one screaming the loudest. For sure. Right? For sure. That fire's burning. I just gonna put that out and I'll be yeah, fine. Yeah, because if we look in the mirror, right? Now this this goes back to like John Maxwell. I'll get into that in a minute. The the law of the rear mirror, right? And I call it the man in the mirror. It's a it's a keynote speech that I have, right? And it talks about that if we don't see value in ourselves, then we're not gonna prioritize our life properly to add value to ourself and what do we see when we look in a mirror we don't see our mind and we don't see our thoughts we see our body and so that's the first thing that especially as men and even as women we see, you know and, and we pay attention to the flaws absolutely that's all the we positives see. that's all we see i might have great arms and a chest but i go wow i can't even see my abs right and then i, well, I don't like the way my, my my ass looks or my thighs look and we don't look at the, the we don't focus on what is good and what is working we we see the flaws right and so that's what we realized as a transformation company that's what everybody else is seeing so let's help them with that piece and then as we get people in shape we're realizing yeah but they're still everybody still seems messed up so then we start it's going because it's all about the wiener <laughs> yeah you can't live for that no right no that's and it's like out the obvious yeah and it's and like if somebody had that pill yep like billionaires yeah right yeah be, 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 only because in our minds, we associate that with um, a man. Yep. Right? 100%. So if that can't change, then the bicep's better. Yep. Right? And yep. so all this, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to, I'm just saying is that at the root of everything uh, is, am I a strong man? Yeah. Am I enough? Am I enough? That's that's what it comes down to. Absolutely. And a lot of men look in that mirror and go, no, I'm not. Why? Because of all these past failures, all these things, all this hurt, all this pain, all this garbage, all this weight that I'm carrying mm-hmm. that I've not addressed. And that was me, right? But I figured out a solution in a way. And, and at first it was exercise. That got me to the first hurdle. Then it was, uh, um, I'm going to forget, I'm not going to get all of these dates right, right? But I hired a coach. I went on, I was on LinkedIn in a very low moment of my life. We had we had raised a couple million dollars for one of our startups. Long story short, a bunch of stuff happened there. And I we lost everything. 
Um, we, we lost our gym. We lost our house. I had my cars repoed. No, no joke. The IRS sees my bank accounts to like the tune of tens of thousands of dollars. Like you could have given me 10 grand out of deposit it and it would still be negative. That's how bad things were. I built that fitness brand off of what I thought was my identity, this Matt Lowe bodybuilder. So when it crumbled, I was too immature with not enough guidance as a young entrepreneur to protect my personal identity from what I was building as a brand, right? And so when that died, I felt like my whole, I, I didn't have anything to live for. And when we lost everything, this is eight months after I got married to my wife and I promised to fight for her and all this stuff. And she thinks oh, I'm marrying this guy that's got this great startup. We've got a lot of, you know, investor money and Bro, it was, like, it, was, it was such a whirlwind of events that it was like a light switch went off. Just everything was good, and then it was not within a matter of what seemed like days. And so we're eight months into being married, and we're couch surfing, bro. Like, And I'm going, she's going to be like, this is where I go to the courthouse and go like, yeah, this whole thing that happened eight months ago wasn't, suppo wasn't supposed to happen, <laughs> right? This guy is broke as a joke now to the tune of negative tens of thousands of dollars, and my personal identity is tied up into what just crumbled. That prequels what I said earlier, the gun moment, right? The gun moment happens shortly after this because I don't know, I don't, I don't see the man in the mirror anymore. Uh, I, I, I look in the mirror and I don't even recognize what I see. I don't know where to go. I, I, I feel like I'm just completely in a hole that I can't get out of. And it's so deep that no one's hearing my cries for help. Mm. And so we get to a point in our marriage where we are, we're, 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 we're couch surfing. I mean, we have so no money that we go 42 days on top ramen and canned tuna. Now I will preface this. My wife can make canned tuna and top ramen taste like a five-star chef just cooked that shit. Like no joke, man. And so like though I, I, I cherish those moments and I smile. They don't even make me sad anymore. I cherish them because it's like she was put in my life to take all my lemons and make lemonade the whole time. And she's like, why? I don't understand why this stuff bothers you. Like, I can just let me handle some of this pain. She deals with it so much better than I do. And I think that's why we balance so well together. Mm, good. And it's, it's this missing component, right? I focused on the physical side of it in this broken moment now of losing my startup and everything that I have my own personal identity tied up into is where I, I reach out to this, I see this ad pop up for uh, this, this, this coach on LinkedIn. And I just decide I need somebody to just tell this story to. I wrote an email for an hour and a half long to this guy. And I'm like, there's no way he's going to read this or even reach out to me. Right. And I'm like, the, the, he wants nothing to do with this. I mean, it was pages long and I just needed, it was like my own release. Right. I needed to just blurt it out to somebody about how angry I was and where I was going. Two days later, I get a phone call and he's like, hey, this is Dr. White. Is this Matt? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, I'm like, uh, at this time, we're working through some fertility stuff. Right. And I'm thinking like, my doctor is not Dr. White. Like, he's like, hey, Matt, you reached out to me two days ago. And I'm like, yeah, I know. But I'm like, I'm, my doctor is not Dr. White. I'm like, can I can I ask you, like, which which fertility clinic are you with? And he starts laughing. He's like, I'm not a fertility doctor. I'm like, OK, who are you? He's like, you reached out to me and wrote me a message on Instagram or on LinkedIn, um, you know, and told me what was going on. And he's like, I wanted to give you a call. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I did. I didn't. It was so like this guy's never going to reach out to me because it was such a blurb of like vomiting of words of like all this pain and suffering and all this stuff and how angry I am. And this guy, like, there's no way this guy. He calls me out of the blue, calls me. And so we have this we, we talk for two and a half hours. I didn't pay this guy a dollar. We talked for two and a half hours and he gives me some just amazing direction of resources in that in that moment. I knew who Maxwell was. I'd read a book, but he redirects me to uh, the 15 laws of growth, which then turns into this new path of like mental discipline. Right. So I've, I've, I've mastered this like physical side. And now I start understanding like, oh, wow, there's principles and laws and, and, and things that I've never the concepts I've never heard of you know, about in, intentionality and growth and all of these different components. I'm like, a growth plan? I don't know. I've never had a growth plan in my life. What is my growth plan? What, what am I, 
what am I doing? You know, so I start asking myself these questions and this guy is, is going, Hey, reach out to me. Keep reaching out to me. Every week we talk, he's not asking for a dollar of, from me. He just wants to help me through this, this struggling pain of going, look, we're couch surfing, man. I don't know how to get back on my feet. He goes, you've got to become more. You keep trying to do more, Matt. You're a strong guy. And you just think like, I can just lift more weight. It solves the problem. I'll just work more hours. It solves the problem. He goes, that's not your problem. He goes, you're getting in your own way. He goes, you're using old techniques in a new world. They don't work anymore. Mm, wow. And I'm that's like, weird. oh, I've never heard of that before. Like, but that makes sense. Yeah. Isn't it weird? He's like, I never thought of that. You're absolutely right. Yes. And it was as clear as day. Yeah, it's clear. Super clear. And so that leads me on to this uh, diving into to Maxwell, right? And so I, I'm a Maxwell speaker, trainer, and coach. I tell people that all the time. I'm a, I'm a disc trainer and consultant. I love to come in and help people understand body language, communication, and how to better sync communication. We all, we all, we all talk, but we rarely connect, mm, right? Yeah, and yeah. so uh, that's a big thing for me is, look, we all communicate, but few of us connect. And so it's one of Maxwell's book. And so... I just dive into this because every chapter I'm reading, I'm like, it's like your sermons. I'm like, did you know what was I'm dealing with in my life right now? Like, did you, did we talk before this? Did you get my notes to put your sermon together? Like, how did you know that that's my story? That's what I felt like with Maxwell books. And I just start devouring this content so much so that we, we do get our feet back underneath us, you know, and start to build stuff up again. This is how we started building stuff up again. In this moment of couch surfing, when this first happens, I am laying in a friend's bed because we're, we're, we're couch surfing and they've got a spare bedroom now. And so we're like, we're sleeping on a twin mattress, I think, together. And it's been two weeks, man. I haven't got out of bed. I, I just can't eat. I can't train. I can't think. I can't do anything. I'm just paralyzed going, I don't, we have like tens of thousands of no money. Like we're, we're, we have nothing. I don't know what to do. Tens Amy of, decides tens to of work. thousands of no money. Yeah. So good. <laughs> Amy, Amy decides to go, I'll work two jobs, three jobs if I have to. So she starts working three different jobs. She's like, but you're not going to give up on your dreams. Well, 17 days later, I'm still in bed. I haven't got out of bed. I can't seem to get out of bed. I've lost 30 something pounds at this point in time. And she's had enough. Truthfully, she walks in, rips open the blinds, pulls the sheet straight off of me, throws a laptop on the bed and goes, figure it out. And I'm like, figure what out? She goes, figure out how to build this again. She goes, you have to, ooh, every time I say this line, it's just so, it, she goes, you have to understand that sometimes we don't believe in ourselves, but other people do. And at this moment, you don't believe in yourself, but I believe in you. And you told me that you would never stop fighting for us. She goes, so figure it out. Dude, I did not build our software company. Let me tell you that right now. I raised money and had that money build our software company, and we don't have any more money. So I'm like, I don't think she understands. Like, I, God bless her. She believes in me, but I, I don't know how I'm supposed to build this again. And we just, I've, but I'm like, but she believes in me, and that's what I'm going to run with right now. It's not even my energy, my fuel, my belief. It's somebody else's, but you know what? If I can borrow it for a little bit of time to try and get the ball rolling again, maybe maybe she's right. Maybe I, maybe if I just focus on her belief in me, then that's where we can go. And I understand that maybe some of the people listening right now don't have that in their life. Right. But I think that that's kind of where you're going with like herd strong of like, Hey, we want this to be a community of men that supports men and equips men and stands up for men. We all have a skill set and a superpower that we don't even believe is a superpower that we can be helping people around us with. Yeah. Yeah. One of the things on men summit, Brad Lominick did this great workshop but he did it for our staff first okay about articulating what the calling is on your life mm. and and I, you just nailed it is my, the calling on my life is to remind men that what god says is true and possible for them is still true and possible for them no matter what they've done or what's yes. been done to them yep it's like it just crystallized right there and what she's saying is like no 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 she just looked at you and went, it's still possible yeah if you don't believe it i do and so does god yeah now get your ass in gear and let's go. Yeah, the like, I wish that there was a camera that recorded this scene because I'm sure I would laugh about it now because I mean it was it was something out of a TV show. I mean, literally rips the sheets off of me. I'm still in bed and I'm thinking like, oh, she's done. She's gonna she's throwing papers at me and I'm like yeah. I'm out. Like I'm done. I'm working three jobs. Your ass is your lazy ass is still in bed two weeks later, you know. And she was just like, no, you're gonna figure this out. 
And, and, and we did, we just slowly, I'm like, you know what? I don't know what to do. I'm just going to start reaching out to people and just seeing like, Hey, I got to tell them the honest truth. It sucks to have to tell people this cause it's, it's embarrassing. I feel humiliated. You know, I feel demasculinized about everything that has just taken place and I completely feel unworthy. Okay. So what did you have to do to push through it to make the first contact? Because that's usually the hardest one. Yeah. The first step, right? Yeah. And, and I keep going back to like this quote that it's easier to act yourself into feeling than to feel yourself into action. Isn't that true? I wasn't feeling it. Emotionally, I wasn't feeling it. And truthfully, I didn't believe it. Is that different than fake it till you make it? I think it is. I do too. I, I, I do think it is. And, and for a couple different components we can get into here in a minute. But I'm like, for me, it's that th- I always relate it back to working out. There's a lot of times in my in my 18 years of training that I don't want to go to the gym. But if I can force myself to just put on my shoes and get there and just walk on a treadmill for five minutes and just start moving, it ends up being the best workout I've ever had. I hear you. Yeah, I, I experienced that this morning. I would even par- or kind of parallel that over to relationships. It's yeah. like, like you don't go home and be a husband or dad because you feel like it every day. You do it because you said you would. Yep. Now, a lot of days you do feel like it and you want to. Mm -hmm. But the days that you don't, it's not on the table that I'm not. Yeah. Right? And that's not, well, I'm out of integrity. I'm not. No, no. You're doing what you said you were going to do in spite of, right? If you felt it every day, (laughs) you know, then it would be no problem. It would be easy. Right? But it's like if, if life was easy, I wouldn't need faith. Yeah. Right. The yeah. reason you faith is not for the easy times; it's for the hard times, right? And it's like, it's just it's like that. It's like fake it till you make it is not the same thing as act yourself into feeling. Don't wait till you feel like acting. And so, and this goes into this human performance side of what we teach, right? Like I, leadership and lifestyle performance is what I would consider my tag, and and it started with lifestyle. Now we lead with leadership. Because when we can focus on the leadership components, we realize making the lifestyle habit changes and routine changes and prioritization, it's that much easier. It's a lot harder working in reverse. Okay, yeah. Right? For me, for, for what we do coaching-wise. And so, and, and, and what I mean by that is that psychologically, when we go to the gym, I don't train, I'm not a bodybuilder anymore, competitive, right? But I still train. And people are always asking me right now because I'm, I'm bigger than I've ever been. I'm really friggin' lean and I'm not getting ready for a show. And they're like, what are you getting ready for? I'm like, life. Like, I'm just training hard. Like I just, I I train all the time, but I train hard now because of what exercise does for cognitive function, cognitive fluidity, depression, anxiety. And I'm a, I'm a naturally prone guy that deals with a lot of anxiety and, and depression. Why? I'm an empath, right? I work with a lot of clients and I, and I, I empathize with their pains and their struggles. It's something I work with, with my coach and counselor all the time going, you can't take their pains as yours, you know, is going to crush you. But that's why I train so hard. And so when I tell people all the time, I'm like, if you see me in my peak moment, especially right now, just understand I'm dealing with a lot of stress yeah. and anxiety. Yeah. You know, and they're like, damn, dude, you're getting huge. I'm like, yep, a lot of stress and strain right now. <laughs> Medicating right now. Yes. Right. Dude, it's the cheapest form of depression. And all kinds of research shows that. I'm not saying that it's going to help you potentially get off your medication if you're on that. But it helps. And so I train because of all the science that's behind what it does cognitive function wise for us. Right. And if I'm in a workplace and I'm helping businesses and I come into teams and work with corporations and you know, they're, they're dealing with a lot of strain. They're hiring me to come in and understand their problems and help give them a clear path to a solution. I got to be able to think like that. And sometimes I'm showing up at seven in the morning. That's why we train early, you know? And when I do that, the oxygenation of the blood, how it affects the brain, how it stems the brain, all of these different components come into play. So I don't necessarily train for, I don't train for bodybuilding anymore. I train for the performance element that it helps me Me that much better in the workplace. It's it's better than any therapy. Absolutely. It's so good. Absolutely. And I, we will, some days we train for hours. I try to get in in and out in less than an hour now, but there's some days where I have two days, you know, I go in the morning with my wife. I'll go in again in the afternoon by myself, you know, just cause I need to work it out. Hey, you're passionate about a lot of things, right? You learn a lot of things. You coach people, men and women, right? You connect things together, right? So I, a minute ago I said, or 50 minutes ago, I forget when it was. (laughs) I said, I I know what the calling is on my life. Mm. 
I want to remind men what God says is true and possible for them is still true and possible for them, no matter what they've done or what's been done to them. What's what what what's your life about? Like yeah. what is the like the banner yeah. going? Right now, in this season of my life, this is this is why I'm here. What is that for you? Yeah, building leaders of today and the brands of tomorrow. It's, it's what has become our trademark, but it started as my I am statement, right, which is my purpose statement. It's like a little workshop that we do with some of our clients, right? A lot of them just, they're building brands, but they feel like they're just purposeless, right? They're just making money, and I'm like, yeah, that, that wears out real fast, okay. you know? And so, same thing for me. And so... War, and when I say brand, everybody some, seems to think of a, a business. When we think of modern day brands, there are millions of individuals making millions of dollars off of nothing but themselves. That's a brand, right? Give and me so, an example: uh, a, 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 a fitness personality. They're they're not necessarily a trainer, but they're an Instagram personality. Right. And so we call them personalities a lot because we've got leadership personalities. We've got coaching personalities. We've got fitness personalities. They're not necessarily really trained to be a coach or a trainer or a fitness star, but they've they've figured out something that works great for them. And now they're they're actually making money with it. Social media has allowed really anybody to to make a tremendous income and build an amazing personal brand. And so because of my last 15 years of building brands. I mean, I started my first salsa business at 15 years old and not salsa dancing, like chips and salsa. Uh, I have to preface that because I have people going like, dude, you do salsa dancing? I'm like, no, you, well, you said you started a salsa company. I'm, Did you look at me? I'm not. Not that there's anything wrong with salsa dancing. <laughs> You've never seen a big white bald ogre <laughs> doing salsa dancing. And so I love, I love startups, right? I love being able to build a brand that impacts people. And so, so brand is... It's like, uh, it's like, um, I'm trying to, I'm trying to find the right words for someone dumb like me, right? It's almost like, Hey, this is, I'm going to use myself. This is Jim Bergen. Mm -hmm. This is what he stands for. This is what he represents. Yep. And you can have, you can be a part of that yep. by engaging in this way. Yep. Is that a brand? Yeah, for sure. Because a lot of these, uh, what I would call like, personalities right they don't necessarily they've got a way to help people with their own element right and some of it's very informal but what we can come in and do is help them understand how to potentially turn that into a program that helps other people with that same value thus make money in that transaction right so they're building a brand they're they're making money off of their personality um some of them are cooking like individual stay-at-home moms that cook they want to start a cooking show they have no idea where to start Right? So we can take them through all of those steps. These are the different dimensions that we do yeah. within our business. This yeah. is what I would call two or three levels deep in our business. But we start with the individual leader because if we can't help them, if we can't help them understand the leadership components of what it means to lead, then I just don't want to work with you even if you have a cooking show okay. because then it's just about making money and that right. just doesn't so drive So there's some me. brands that are just, it's, uh, uh, I think it's Tommy Boy. Yeah. Uh, great, right, right, right. It's either that, I think it's Tommy Boy, which is like, I could put guaranteed on a box of crap and it's still just a guaranteed box of crap. So you're not just saying all brands are good and equal because no. there's some brands that yeah. are just shallow and empty. And I don't right? want to work with them. Right, exactly. Yeah. So, but a brand is like, hey, here's what I want to use my life to leverage yes. to make a difference in the world. Yep. Okay. So give me your banner statement again. Building the leaders of today and the brands of tomorrow. Okay. All right. What's standing in the way of most people experience that leadership mm. and that and that healthy branding of whatever it is they want to do with their life. What's the biggest obstacle you're running into? Self worth, identity, identity, the number one. I'm not I'm not good enough. I'm not a professional, whatever that means to them. I'm not an expert, whatever that means to them. Um, to me, this is an expert. I faced this massive problem in my life and I figured a way out. Now I want to turn that into a course. I want to turn that into a book. I want to turn that into a coaching program to help other people that are facing that problem yeah, good. and help them get to the other side of the bridge. It's what we talked about earlier is my biggest pain point is probably my biggest point of gifting to the world. Yeah. Right? Yes. It just is. And we want to go like, like I always said, I wish I had sexier things to be ashamed of. Right. <laughs> Right, like, like, what's your passion? I used to rob banks. Yeah, you know, <laughs> no, I was just a shameful little kid who got held down. You know, and yeah. like, like, and it's embarrassing and weak and blah 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 blah. Yeah. Right, and then I made a lot of really bad decisions out about that that aren't very masculine. Right, yeah, but but, but not many people. 
Not very, I haven't met any, I've never met any bank robbers. Yep. I've met a lot of dudes who's like going, yeah, me too. Yes. Right? Yeah. Right. So I'm just going to ask you some questions. Yeah. Right? Um, Cause this is going to be another podcast later. Let's do it. Cause we can't just cut this into six different podcasts. Right. <laughs> is what are the connections that, that you're helping people make that they never have? And I'll give you an example. Food and mental health, food and mental health mm-hmm. or exercise and mental health, right? I'm not saying that you have to work out every day in order to be whatever that is. Yep. But I, I, I'm dedicating the rest of my life to going like, you cannot take the four quadrants of your life, heart, soul, mind, and strength, and say they have nothing to do with each other. Mm-hmm. So what, what's, what in your experience, what are some of the biggest aha moments going, well, I never knew that those had anything to do with one another. Yeah. What are some of those for you that you've helped men and women work through. Yep. And I'll talk about the individual columns, exercise. People think exercise is training. I got to go to a gym, right? Exercise is just movement. I know. I remember right? saying so that that's a misconception that I had early on. I always thought I had to go to the gym, go to the gym, go to the gym to get that, that mental stimulation that I was going for. It's not, I could just move. I could go for a run, a jog, a walk, put myself into a different physical state yep. to, to then change my mental state. That's that whole act yourself into feeling rather than feel yourself into action. We can sit on the couch and go, okay, I'm going to sit here and be, wait till I'm motivated to go to the gym. That's not going to work, right? That's trying to wait till you can feel yourself into acting. You need to work and have that accountability around you and start to build that discipline to go, no, I'm going to act in spite of, because as soon as I start moving, movement changes the chemistry in our brain it instantly, does. instantly. And so, and I do this with my triggers, right? With, 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 again, and I'm going to talk about this openly, my, my porn, porn, right? If there's ever that thought in my mind where I'm like, oh, here it is. Like nobody's home. I could just, you know, go to a couple websites. I have, I always am ready to just walk out of the house and I will just go for a walk instantly. When that, when that thought sets in, I don't sit there and go, okay, I can do this. I'm good. I'm whatever. I know how quick my body and my mind can immediately go down that rabbit trail. So if I'm driving through your neighborhood and you're. Walking. You see me walking, you probably know what I'm dealing with. <laughs> um, as I progressed in my knowledge and understanding of performance, it's not just physical. It's emotional, it's spiritual, and it's nutritional. And it's more so nutritional. Because the food that we eat nowadays just doesn't have the efficacy that it used to have. Mm-hmm. Just in the last 10 years, we're talking the last 10 years, organic produce Organic produce has lost 70% of its efficacy of, of nutritional value in 10 years. Where do you think we're going to be in another 10 years? Someone Five gave me years. an amazing statistic that said that the average 20-year-old man has the testosterone level of a 70-year-old man yes. 20 years ago. Yes. Right? Yes. And, and then uh, I read a really interesting book. It's, it, I, we were interviewing a guy, and he told me about this book. It's called The Penis Book. Okay. Well, I have to order it. But it was about... <laughs> The effects of pornography, yes, on on young guys yep. who the average exposure now is at eleven. Wow! And and twenty, you're not gonna believe this. Twenty five percent of high school, college age young men are already experiencing ED. What? Because of the lower testosterone levels and diet and the overstimulation of, uh, right? So I believe it. So I mean, the, the, I, I just the reason I'm saying that is like. There are things going on in the nutritional world, yes, and in the in the in the in the world of the mind with exposure to just overexposure because we're overstimulated all the time through the internet, yeah, right, and through our phones. And now you have nutrition, and you have pornography, and then you have just constant activity that yeah. we don't turn anything off. Like we have to, we have to intentionally. And this is what you're coaching people. You yep. have to make some intentional changes in your life. Yes. Like this, so this morning my alarm goes off at three. Okay. And I know that tomorrow I go on a retreat and then Monday I leave for Africa. All right. So I'm going to be traveling for two yeah. weeks. And I'm like, everything within my brain said, dude, just go back to bed. Yeah. Like I got in the bathroom, I brushed my teeth and then it was a moment. Cause there's my gym stuff and there's my bed. Yeah. All right. And I have a seven o'clock breakfast meeting and I went, this is a note. This can't be a decision thing. Mm-hmm. This decision has been made. Mm-hmm. So like, should I look at pornography or should I not? Should I cheat on my wife? Or should I not? <laughs> should I go home or should I not? Should I, should I have a third drink or should I not? It's like, I can't even put those going. Like I can't even ask my, like, myself that question. Yeah. I made that decision years ago. Mm-hmm. 
right? And if I mm-hmm. if every day I have to go, am I going to be faithful? <laughs> if you have to ask that question every day, eventually the answer will be no. Yeah. So you just stop asking that question, right? Yeah. So am I going to am I going to do what I said I was going to do? I don't ask myself that question anymore. Yep. Like like Robin and I, in thirty, this is going to sound weird. And I'm not bragging, but it's 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 what worked for us. In thirty eight years of having fights as a married couple, we've never thrown divorce on the table because yep. if you do, you cannot take it off the table. Yep. So if if you if you say I. Looking at porn isn't an option for me. Then it's a matter of time, mm-hmm. right? If going in, into stupid debt again is an option, it's a matter of time. Yep. But if you say, you know, I'm, I'm not going to put that in my body. Yep. I'm not going to do that with my body. I'm not going to do that with my money. I'm not going to do that with my wife. I'm not going to do that, right? So we're not going to have that conversation, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So it's like you... I went all the way around the block for that, but That's good. my point is like, you have to look at the reality of your life. There's a connection between what you eat and everything else. Absolutely. Mental health, ED, sexual performance, intimacy, depression, anxiety. So much of it is stemmed from food. Yeah. It's the, it's the fuel that we put in our car. Think about it this way. If you decided to eat a little shitty food, right? It's like putting gasoline or diesel in your truck, whatever it runs on and putting a cup of water in there. It's probably still going to run. It's just not going to run very well for very long. And over time, it's going to compound and compound and slowly start breaking down the internal components of that engine, Mm -hmm. right? And everything that it passes through. And then we sit on the side of the road broken down going, well, what happened? Yeah. And we, oh, I don't understand why I got diabetes or I don't understand why I'm dealing with this or that or the other. And it's like when we go through what we call our assessment phase, and we did this with, 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 health transformation and we do this with business transformation the first phase that we go through is assessment that's number one assessment you've got to understand where we're at otherwise we have no idea how to get to where we're going it's just like taking a a road trip if my goal is to end up in los angeles which nobody wants to go there but anyways (laughs) (laughs) but i don't know where i'm actually starting then I have no idea how to act. I'm going to waste a lot of time and I'm going to run out of gas and fuel and all of these other issues are going to be because I didn't take time to understand where am I starting at and what am I starting with? And most of us, right, when we set transformation goals or performance goals in life and business and losing weight or whatever, we go, we want to do a 180. We want to go from here all the way over here. I'm going to start this extreme diet. I'm going to start training 90 minutes a day, seven days a week for 12 weeks. No, you're not. I can tell you statistically what that failure rate is. You end up way worse than you were. Yeah. So that's why I say we don't do diets or these extreme programs. We modify. Where are you at? What are we working with? What foods do you like? Okay, this is how we're going to make modifications to start making what we call a lifestyle change. Something that eventually we're going to get to a point where you can sustain that forever. That's good. All right, so I, I got to land this because it's like I, I can do this all day. For, I could do <laughs> So I'm going to give two plugs. Okay. Okay. One is uh, we just launched Herd Strong a while back. Yep. Right? And you've agreed to say, I, I want to do an e-course yeah. on goal setting. Yeah. All right? And uh, and you just start, it's going to start with an assessment. Mm-hmm. Right? And then it's going to be a progressive thing. It's not going to be like, in, in three months, I'm going to be Mr. Olympia and make a billion dollars. Right? Yep. It's a realistic goal setting. All right? So I'm looking forward to that. Talk about uh, your business, okay? okay? This is a shameless plug to go yeah, like, okay. here's what I offer to to men and women, business leaders, uh, performance, yep. d- right? Yep. T- t- and where can we find where can we find out more about about Matt Lowe and, yeah. and all that you do? Yeah, so it's our, our company's Founders Atlas, foundersatlas.com. Um, we chose Founders, founders Atlas, Atlas dot com. for we'll a post reason. That. Everybody's a founder of our own life, Ooh, right? So good. it's 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 not just founders in business. I'm the founder of my marriage. I'm the founder of my life. And Atlas is a map. How do we get there? And so over the last 15 years, our team has created all kinds of what we call atlases, business atlases, lifestyle atlases. These are step-by-step, I don't want to say books, 
Some of them are courses, PDFs, combinations, or whatever to help through curriculum. specific curriculum, to help through specific problems. How do I get from this point A, this challenge, this struggle, this problem that I'm dealing with, and how do I get over this bridge? We have hundreds of them now because we've worked with thousands of clients through all of these different sticking points. And so ultimately, the easiest way to sum it up is if you're feeling stuck in your business, if you're feeling stuck in your performance, weight loss, lifestyle, we, we help with that. I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible, right? Um, we have we have a multitude of different programs, but our, our main program is called Breakthrough Performance Club, and we talk about lifestyle and leadership performance. So we do all things. We, we focus on the full individual, right? And when I say founder, if you don't look at yourself as the founder of your life, it's probably not, not a program for you. If you're looking for a freemium type of model, go to YouTube. There's tons. <laughs> and and, I, and I, I don't say that in like a go to YouTube because we don't have anything for free. We do. But a lot of people are like, well, I just, I'm looking for a training program. I'm like, dude, we don't, we don't, we have that, but that's just, that's just a tool, right? We've got a lot of other things that we've got to understand of where we're going to help somebody. And that starts with understanding what are we dealing with, right? Mm. And, and a lot of us think what we're dealing with, I would say nine times out of 10, when we do an intake call with somebody, it's less than 10 minutes for me to go. That's not the problem. Yeah. That's not what we're dealing with. Let's so, keep so pulling the, that onion. Uh, so recently I, I made a connection that I cannot disconnect is that my relationship with God and my relationship with Robin are connected. And if one's not going well, <laughs> it's probably not just because of that one. Mm-hmm. It's a reflection of this other one. So like if Robin and I are good, God and I are good. If God and I are good, Robin and I are good. And if I'm kind of like withdrawing from Robin, I'm probably to justify that. I'm also withdrawing from God or mm-hmm. if I'm withdrawing from God, then right, right, they're symptomatic of each other. Yeah. Right. I, this is what I sense what you're saying is that we all come to points in our life going like I'm stuck. Yeah. Right. And we look at going and the reason I'm stuck is that. Mm-hmm. And what you're going to what I think you're going to point mm-hmm. out is maybe. Yeah. But it might be this other thing that you never even thought was eggs. Right. Yes. Nine times out of ten. It's it's it's, it's a we'll blind spot. It, uh, you just took the words out of my mouth. Yeah. It's a blind spot. Right. And we don't see blind spots. Thus the name. Thus the name. <laughs> Coaches do though. Yeah. And that was the that was what changed, I think, the trajectory of everything that we do was when I hired a coach and he was like, No, that's not your problem. This is your problem. I'm like, how did you see that so easy? He's like, Because I'm not in the trench digging. That's good. I'm standing on top of it and I can see everything that's being done. Mm. And you're you're digging in the wrong direction. No wonder you're not you're not seeing the end. You're never gonna see the end going this way. You've got to make a U turn and go back a little bit. That's you good. know, and, and and recorrect your path. And that's that kind of third party element. Like if we, some of us are disciplined enough to where we can take that time, pause, reflect, and really review what's going on from that unemotional, empathetic element. Very few of us are skilled enough to do that on our own, Mm -hmm. you know? And that's why it takes strong men around us, strong women around us, strong people around us to go, "Mm, Hey, you're, you're, you're not in line anymore with what the promise you put together. Like and I see that now because I just saw what just took place, and that that's not that's not a fault. No, it's just a reality. Yes, is that it's like I mean, like Solomon says in Proverbs, like you need some wise counselors in your life, and it's of course we have the Holy Spirit, mm-hmm. okay, and and but sometimes we like the Holy Spirit also speaks through. For me, He speaks through a guy that I pay two hundred dollars an hour for. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, right to, to look and going, okay, I right, I, I I'm not. I don't have a dog in this fight. Yeah. So I can actually just, this is what I see. Yep. Right. I have my, all my dogs are in the fight. So I'm very biased and very, and very, so that that's, this is good. This is just the beginning. Yeah. Like the beginning of a friendship. Yeah. Beginning of a relationship, beginning of a ministry together. Right. Um, so I'm going to turn this on you. Cool. Right. All right. Matt, look, what's, what's, what's the goal on your horizon right now? That's like going, Here's right. It, it may be professional. It may be relational. It may be familial. Uh, familial. It may be spiritual. I don't know. Right. Like, here, what what are your sights set on right now? I want a family. I want to start a family, and that's that's a, a personal goal, right? It's been something that we that's been a hurdle for us for eight years. Like that's people ask me all the time, like, how did you know when you wanted to marry your wife, especially in the college ministry, right? And I'm like, it's so clear as day. I'm like, I asked my wife what her dream job was. They're like, well, yeah, what'd she say? I said, she wanted to be a mom. And they're like, oh, you have kids? I said, no, that's my battle right now, guys. And it's something that is a very hard battle for us, right? And uh, we're getting ready to 
try and go through this again, but we know how emotional it was the last time for us. And so we're like, are we, are we ready this time to do this? And it's like this, this tug of war with God right now. Like, are we, are we going to go through this again? Are we going to, are we going to push our bodies to this limit? Because it, it really does remove the, the fun, the fun part of baby making out of it when it's this difficult. It, it, yeah, beca- sure. it becomes, it gets to everybody be a chore. Everybody says that too. It, everybody says that. Yeah. It gets to be a chore and it's, you lose sometimes this, the, the, the true intimacy in our marriage. And it was, it was, it was very hard mm-hmm. the last time, yeah. you know? And so I'm like, you know, that's where I'm at in that personal side professional side of me I want to build leaders I understand that a lot of my blind spots were due to um, lack of leadership knowledge of how to and leadership is influence at its core to me right how do I influence my clients how do I influence my family my community the men around me to want to actively better themselves and that's my new I don't want to say addiction. It's not an addiction. It's my obsession. It is my calling. It's so clear as day that God put me through these challenges in my life and allowed me to create the um, the immense amount of curriculum and, and, and atlas guides that we have to help people through all these different sticking points and problems because it was for me, it was a, my, one of my coaches told me success is a set of systems, right? And systems is just a set of steps. And so is failure. Okay, so, all right. So I'm going to connect the two goals. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, I don't need to, right? <laughs> so what you just said here yeah. is steps and systems. And right, and you have this thing over here, like you can't find the system or the steps. Mm-hmm. So so when I was going through my sabbatical shit and all that, right? right. I, I remember calling James, on that, my spiritual director down in Mexico, and I went, I feel like I'm in a long, dark, dark tunnel, mm-hmm. and all I see is more tunnel. Mm-hmm. And, and I think I see a light at the end of the tunnel, right? It's just one more train. Yeah. And James asked me this question. It said this. Why do you think God still has you in that tunnel? What might he want to teach you? Mm. So I'm going to flip this on you. Then we'll <laughs> lock this thing mm-hmm. down. So there's something in going on in both of these things yeah. that can't, they're not unrelated. Mm-hmm. Have you been able to figure out what that might be? I'm a bit of a stubborn person. And uh, very, very hard headed. And um, some of it is how far do my wife and I want to take the external help, medical help, right? And and to each his own. Sure. That's a big discussion in our house right now. How yeah. far is, is, are we willing, how far do we want to take it? Some people will go all the way through IVF. That's where we're stuck right now, yeah. um, you know. And, and and again, I have nothing against that. We have right. friends with beautiful kids that have gone through IVF. Sure, you too. As it sits right now, it's just not something that my wife and and I and I support her. She's not a hundred percent sure that she wants to do that and go that far, you know. And so for us, we're gonna we're like, okay, well, what what step are we going? We we know we need medical help um, to to make this happen if it's to have a a, a, a family and a child. And so it's how far do we want to go? Mm-hmm. And the flip side to that is there's a lot of children that don't have parents. And adoption has always been something that has been on our on our radar. We just kind of thought and had hoped that, you know, maybe we would have our first child, you know, and a baby ourselves. And it's, you know, so that's what we're wrestling with right now. Okay. And, and right, so all right, I'm going to dig deeper. Please. All right. <laughs> Turn this into therapy. Yeah. You can jump on the couch if you want. Right? <clears throat> okay. So there is a truth at play here that God wants to teach you, mm-hmm. whether it's medical or adoption, right? Right. right. Whether it's biological or, or whatever, right? What is that? What's true in either case? I'm going to explain a prayer that happened this weekend, right? We had the, we had the college uh, ministry fall retreat that my wife and I volunteered at. And when I say I had a, a Holy Spirit moment, the first time I've ever felt like I felt and heard God clear as day. Like I literally opened my eyes during prayer and was like, did somebody, huh? <laughs> did somebody just say that? Like it was so like, bro. I mean, I, you can ask my wife, she was there with me. I was shaking as though somebody put me in ice cold water. It was a very surreal moment for me. And I was praying to God going, you know, God, like, why haven't you blessed us with, with a, a, a family? Explain yourself. Yeah. Right. I'm like, why haven't you blessed us? Like, 
you knew this was my wife's dream. It's my dream. I thought we'd have eight kids by now. No joke. Um, I wanted a huge family. And as clear as day, as I'm like crying out to him during this prayer, all I heard him say was, I gave you 90 this weekend. Mm. And all these, most of these kids have their parents, right? But as clear as day, when I'm saying this prayer going, why haven't you blessed us with a child? Like, I want to be a dad. I want to raise a, 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 a son, a daughter. I want to be an influence in their life. And why haven't you given that to me? He goes, I gave you 90 this weekend. That's good. And that's when I'm like, I, I, I told Ben immediately, I'm like, bro, I am, you have given us such a purpose to allow us to come in and volunteer and, and, and help that I'm like, there's other things going on that another podcast for another day, you know, that, that is happening because of this, this, this college ministry that's working in both, not just my life. It's the first time that my wife's come to me and said, I, I know this has given me a purpose in my life. I love working with this age group of girls. Why? Because we can be that influence to them, you know? And so as we kind of wrestle with that side of it going, okay, like, do, do we, do, do we keep pursuing this other element and how far do I feel like it's too far for us? And is this of God for us to go this, this far down the medical route or is it not from God or, you know, like, so it, it, it is, it's a weird, it's a weird wrestle right now, you know? Um, and one that I can say, that I don't know that I have a, a totally clear answer. Mm -mm. Sure. You know, but I do know that he's opening a path Dude, for us. For what? <laughs> for all the above. Um, for adoption. And for us to work actively on, on still pursuing to have our, our, our own child naturally, you know. Um, and so we, we are taking those steps. Um, we are going through you know, starting the, the medical procedures again to as far as we want, you know, feel comfortable at this current moment, that could change. I mean, next, next month we could say, look, we're going to go all the way. We're going to go IVF this time. We're going to go all the way through, you know, um, can I, can I suggest some language? Absolutely. You ask God to be a dad one way or another. God's going to be faithful mm -hmm. to give you the desire of your heart mm -hmm. in ways you don't know how he's going to do it. Absolutely. And I, that, I mean, bro, that goes back to the, the comment of like that, that prayer that I felt so clearly is going, I gave you 90 this weekend. There, there's, there's young men that are opening up to me in ways that I, I just, I don't even feel equipped. And I've been a professional coach for 13 years, you know, and I'm like, I, I, I it, it That's feel, called parenting right there. Yeah. What you just described is I'm totally unprepared. <laughs> I'm totally unprepared for this. Even though I do this for a living Right. Yeah. There's times. Right. And I do. I feel like that 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 father figure, that older brother that is these these young men feel so confident in coming to me and talking to me about problems and things because they know part of my story and that they haven't been able to break free from those shackles, per se, that weight that they're carrying, mm -hmm. you know. And so in, in a way like it, it is like I feel I feel so called to this this college age, you know, ministry piece that it's like I, I love coming on Tuesday nights to hang out with these, these guys and girls. And I, I love where it's going. I love the conversations that we're having, you know, and how deep they're going. And it's like, wow, the, these are as weird as that. This sounds, I'm like, these are, these are my, my, my kids. That's right. These are my kids right now. This is maybe it's intermediately, you know, but I'm like, I, I it's not, it's not for the short term, whether I had my own kids or not. Like this is college ministry is an, is an element that I don't see myself not being a part of for, Ever. for forever probably like yeah. it is it truly has given me like I, and i know my purpose in the professional world and what i want to do with my wife and hopefully start a family this is a purpose in a in a in a way that i didn't i didn't even see before that's good yeah that's Th thanks for sending me a weird video message a, <laughs> a while back absolutely man right. thanks for making him send that weird video message right no it's like I think we're just getting started. Yeah. And it's an honor to know you. Thank you. I mean, you're teaching me, you're teaching me some good stuff. Well, I mean, I can speak for myself, but I know my wife is on this as well. Like, thank you for your guidance, for your openness to share as a pastor, your struggles, your hurts, your heartache, and, and what you and Robin have gone through. I mean, we, do, we were a mess last Sunday. Going through. Going through. Yeah. You know, and it's, um, 
and we're all going through battles together. Yeah, that's good. You know, and I think together we, again, are like individual links in a chain. Like, you're not very useful or strong by yourself, but the second you and I link arms and we link arms with other men and hundreds of men, like, it, it allows me to do battle a lot more equipped. Shield wall. Yeah. Let's go. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks, Matt. Thank you, brother.